welcome to the Senior View. And today we have somebody very special, a wonderful poet. And I think you're really going to enjoy listening to her. She has such depth, and um, I think you're really going to be glad that you're watching our show. But first of all, I'd like to introduce you, and I know you know Marlene Troops, our outreach worker at the Senior Center, Amy Beck, who is the assistant director, and of course our very special guest, Mary Lou Mansfield. Welcome, Mary Lou. Thanks so much, Mary, for having me. Oh, it is a joy. It is a joy. And um, what would you like to start off with? Well, I picked several um, that I really enjoy. Of course, I enjoy all of them. <laughs> uh, this one is called Moonlight Across My Pillow. And it's mm -hmm. something that happened in the middle of the night. You wake up, and instead of keeping my eyes closed, I paid attention to what was going on. And it became quite a beautiful story. Moonlight across my pillow. Something stole into my room. It came quietly, unannounced. I would not have known but for one open, sleepy eye. Moonlight danced across my pillow like a small bird whose delicate body nearly bends a branch. Moonlight continues to caress my place without a sound, silence of quiet, peaceful night, delightfully void of disturbance. Moonlight made its way, wafting like summer breeze through an open window, barely ruffling curtains. Moonlight projected light, no warmth of which to speak, semblance of haloed head, radiance of angelic grace. Moonlight held me captive in its light, erasing lines of care and wear, making hair and skin translucent in the gentle touch of its journey. Moonlight tiptoed, I dared not move. It kept a pace, although wanted to linger. It found appreciation and delight. Alas, there were other pillows to cross this night. Moonlight rose and traveled and then began to tuck away. My pillow, a welcome host, obliged this compelling sojourner. Moonlight gone, I wondered where. Who would be the next to bathe? My sleepy eye turned to rest, and then I saw the light emerge. Moonlight engaged the pillow next. My love captured in brilliant glow. I immersed in the dance repeated and wondered if he would ever know. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful thoughts. Beautiful thoughts. And it, living on Cape Cod, everything is so clear. So when you open the curtains at night, mm -hmm. this is what you see. And it was quite inspiring. And when I got up the next morning, there were the words. That's right. And you got your paper and pencil and exactly. got to work. Got to work. Wonderful. Beautiful. And what else would you like to read? Well, I have, um, I have one about winter, which seemed very appropriate today <laughs> as I left my house and it was freezing. Um, just called winter. How wondrous a cold winter's day Frigid air snaps the face and wakes it from comfortable warmth. Blanketed white, a winter's ground is tucked away. Smoothed, clean surface folds into corners of thickets. Lone track, a small creature seeks repast. Imprints in the crystalline surface leave behind a trail to its destination. Pure white, Punctuated with grays and browns, beauty in stark desolation feeds the senses. Royal entrance, fluttered appearance of a brilliant red cardinal, commands the scene. He owns the naked branch. Last afternoon vestiges linger as long as possible. Brilliant red perched on a jagged gray line, peruses the diamond sparkles laid at his feet. Night falls. This day is one of a kind. Oh. I saw a beautiful red cardinal this morning. And it's amazing how they do stand out. Yes. When you look out your window, and that's what you see red on a far branch. Exactly. And so beautiful. Quite so, royal. Yes, yes. Quite pompous, too. They do own everything they're involved oh, they're in. They're very confident. <laughs> yes. Very confident. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that was lovely. Thank Just you. Just lovely. Thank you. 
Okay. I yes. have, um, I have, well, I have several, but I have one that um, I wrote a couple of years ago about my youngest son, and then this one ended up being published in a book called Shadow and Light, an e-book that several friends and myself, part of a writing group, contributed to. Yes. So we all took some of our things that we enjoyed the most, and uh, this one I enjoyed very much. It speaks to both my husband and my son. Called Father's Boots. My son, the youngest, rebel, renegade, renaissance man, most like his father, smile, sensitivity, sacrifice, most like his father of younger days, impulsive, impish, irresistible. My son, he's the one. He wore his father's boots, walked a road least traveled, wound a pace of free spirit, whistled his father's tune. My son, the youngest one, fit in his father's boots, dreamed the dreams of his father, dragged his spirit down the isolated road, dabbled in wayward desires. My son, most like his father, stumbled in his father's boots, searched his heart, sang his father's song, saw his father's sunset. My son, the youngest, walked the highway alone, found his way, flirted with life, followed his will. My son, the youngest one, wore his father's boots, met his father on the lonely road, saw himself in the familiar smile, and found peace along the way. Hmm. It made me happy to write that because yes. it speaks so much of both of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and they look very much alike. <laughs> so it's good. Um, I have two that I have written about uh, more recently about the senior age, and they're more amusing than anything. Fortunately, it seemed that way <laughs> when I wrote them. <laughs> One is called Lovers. Lovers, old lovers, older lovers. A string of laughter trickles from the bedroom, seeps through the vents, absorbs into the carpet, bounces off framed family. It stops, then percolates, refuses to be subdued, muffled with hands or shushed with fingers. Squeals of uncontrollable delight, washed with leaky tears, roll in waves of giddiness, never taking a breath. Fatigue abets silence, then a gasp of a yawn, then a sigh of the lover. Moments squeeze by in quiet agony, then a chirp or a chortle or a twitter or a titter. Lovers, old lovers, older lovers, untie another string of laughter. And it sort of came to me, because sometimes, you know, you get one of those laughing things on, and sometimes in the middle of the night, and you have company upstairs, and you think, oh dear, <laughs> there's nothing funny happening here, but we're laughing, laughing, and we're untying another string, <laughs> and it continues. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there are other people that have that happen to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, this one is called Lines and Creases, and that was the prompt for it, was just the words lines and creases and, and whatever we in the group thought of to write, so I kind of immediately went to lines and creases. A mirror hangs on a wall, not a benign addition at all. It singles me out of the family triage, reflects my image within its mirage. I stare and peruse that self of mine, seeing the face of another defined. Lines make mark of every junction. Creases pretend to contribute function. Skin is pinked by cream and blush. Hair seeks volume with biotin brush. Bones are shrinking overnight muscles sagging, a curious sight. Tis I or my mother, I cannot decide. Winks and smiles, familiar not denied. O oh, mirror, if you had only lied to my face, to my youth I'd return, happily, post haste. 
Wonderful. You know, when you look in the mirror and you see your mother, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there she is, mm -hmm. <laughs> laughing, <laughs> enjoying. <laughs> so I could continue? Sure. Okay, great. Um, let's see, where am I? Oh, this is one I wrote for Valentine's uh, last year for my husband. I started to realize that instead of um, buying a Hallmark card, I, I could write my own <laughs> and do a more personal job about it. Uh, it's called You. The days of loving you have grown great in number. I knew the beginning, I see no end. Your energy is like waves rolling onto the shore, defying space or obstruction, always reaching beyond the ordinary. The light in your eyes, the brilliance of your smile, dim the stars, muting the shine they furnish. Your embrace, always comforting, your words strong and true, reassuring with strength of mountains, caressing with serenity of a river. You are in all God's creations. You are one with Him. You are made in a unique and wonderful way, gifted to me for eternity. Oh. You that must have appreciated he that. He did. Yes. 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 That one was a, a lovely, lovely one to write. Very much. Um, one of the prompts that we had in our writing group was, um, this is where I've been. So there were lots of stories about um, being abroad, living in another country. Um, some people had never been off Cape Cod. I said, well, I've been to Hopkinton, so <laughs> that made me in the loop. <laughs> uh, but I, I took a different turn on it, and, and I thought back to, this is where I have been. And I think there are other people who have been here as well. And I think I may have met them. And if they, someone finds a familiar tune here, I hope it's helpful. I've spent some time in a hole, never at the bottom. Time afforded to ponder. Friends through lifelines, I caught them, then climbed out. I've been in an onion patch, peeling layers of bitter skin one at a time. When I finished the task, the sweet pearly center was my reflection. I've been the pink rose on the bush, bound tightly in a pod. I was nurtured by the sun and rain, grew despite the thorns. When time was right, petals unfolded and I was free. I have been everywhere. That is something else because it shows, you know, feelings. And as yes. you know, we, we go all through different feelings. And right. We all get into a hole. We all, How yes, we there are climb out. <laughs> and, and, and exactly, and there, there needed to be uh, friends along the way to yes. Yes. help with these things. And mm -hmm. so that one, it, it, and I, it's one of those poems where I started to write it, and I did not expect that was the way it would go. When I got to mm. the end, I was surprised. Very, it very beautiful. Started with. This is where I've been, mm -hmm. and I was really amazed. As happens all uh, often, um, many things that I write, I find, I start, I get involved in it, and when I get to the end, it's as if God has spoken to me in the last couple of lines. Mm -hmm. This is what I wanted you to know, and it's very comforting, very enlightening. Uh, I have one more. Great. I have a thousand more, but I have one. <laughs> it's called Between. This is another one of those, um, you might have been awake all night, but now you, you just are starting to wake up. And do I want to wake up? Do I want to stay asleep? What happens in that time? In between the hours of thought and dreams, before the dawn of feelings and senses, in the seconds of imaginings and emerging consciousness, the spirit haunts and visits and flits and flaunts and scurries and skirts. For what is it searching? Which direction must it take? What is the course? It staves off awakening, seeks present existence, desires to remain lulled in bosom of sleep. Such is the moment for resolution split-second healing, 
light shining on the day. Beautiful. And I always felt that, that just at that moment, okay, I'm going to wake up. I'm resolved. Mm -hmm. I'm healed. I'm ready to start. And there's always the light of the day. Yes, yes, yes. It's, oh, so true, so true. So these are some of the things I brought, and, and I, I just think it's interesting to know how people, everyone I know that I've been with on the Cape that I write with comes from a different place. Some do all rhyming poems. I never thought I could write a poem to save my life. It was all little short stories and narratives. And well, I, how long have you been writing? Well, probably um, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. I started, um, it started with a rant. I was angry at Oprah about something. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't get onto her website. <laughs> so I wrote it anyway, and I, I realized, oh, that was, that was pretty good. I sounded good in that writing. I'd let her know exactly what I wanted her to know. <laughs> and um, so I thank God for the rants because I was able to hone some of those things. But mm -hmm. a, lot of the th a lot of children's stories I've written. Mm -hmm. And then um, I thought, gee, it'd be great if I could write a poem. So I just tried it one day, and then, then I have just you know, so many of them that surprised me. And uh, sometimes I write all poems and I can't write a story. I don't know what happens, that just stops. And then I'll write stories and I haven't been not able to write a poem for a few days. So mm -hmm. it, I don't seem to have control over that part of it, mm -hmm. which is interesting. I think I, the mind has to be set. Yes. And, um, and not being a spontaneous person. That's right, that's right. <laughs> I have to have a plan. <laughs> I think quiet brings out a lot of creativity um, in thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, um, being retired now, you know, I have more quiet time. And, you know, it's amazing what you think of. Yes. Where, as before, you were so busy, just go, 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 you know, and, and it's good. It's good. That's exactly it, because mm -hmm. your, your body slows down, you're, you, you see things. I found out what a visual person I am. I, you know, I just see everything, and I said, well, mm -hmm. I could write about that. I could write about that, mm -hmm. and and now I have the time to do it. Once teaching was done, and um, I did substitute for a couple years in East Ham when we moved down. But one day, I I said to my husband, I, I looked him in the face. I said, Don't make me go back there. <laughs> I don't know the math. <laughs> I can't do it. I said. Mm -hmm. He said, "Well, what would you like to do?" I said, "I'd just like to stay home and write poetry." He said, "Okay." Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I have a supportive person yes. there with me. Yes, you're a lovely couple. <laughs> well, you're very you. fortunate. We are blessed. Yeah. Yes, you are. are. Do you have other poems? Uh, nope. Those are the ones I brought for today. Okay. Well, I yeah. think that's wonderful. Great. And thank you so much. And, oh, my and I know that Marlene and Amy may have some questions or comments or. Um, would you like to ask her any? Oh, I think your work is lovely. Thank it's, you so much. It's um, very calming. Oh, good. There's a calmingness yes. that comes out. I think it's a gift that comes to me as well. Yeah. And that's how, well, how what it sounds like when it's yeah, done. It's lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. It's beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. I, and I liked what, <coughs> excuse me, I liked what you said about um, peace and, and a, a listening because it, it comes to yes. you. So you, clearly you're listening. And, and opening your awareness. So the, the quietness right. really does, I don't know, promote that. It, yes. it helps bring it on, the, the, the ability to share. I think when you're quiet, you know, mm -hmm. and I, you can tell it. You can tell in what you've written that you've been quiet, you've been listening, mm -hmm. you've mm -hmm. been observing and, yes. and seeing. And I, I, I love that. I mean, there's so much activity in today's world, so it's exactly. nice when you can have that. Yes. Right. Yes. And you realize that it's quiet. Uh, in fact, one day outside, I had to snap my fingers to see if there was sound. Mm -hmm. It just happened to be, there was no traffic, you know, we don't live where there's traffic. Nice. There, I know. <laughs> um, there was nothing, but inside your brain, you, you hear a lot of things, and that's mm -hmm. when the words start to come. But mm -hmm. that's exactly it. You have to have the place and the quiet to do it. So thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Well, Marlene and Amy, what's happening at the center these days? What kind of services are we doing and any changes since I've been there? <laughs> you want to go first? You want me to? Uh, well, we've, I, I can. I guess we have our continued activities and, and 
The thing to remember is that you don't need to be a senior to come and participate. Um, if there's room in the activities, I mean, seniors are obviously the first choice in, in activities, but there's often a lot of room for people to come and join in. So if you're at home and you're looking for a exercise class or an outlet of some sort, you know, definitely come on down to the Senior Center. You can find us online. You can find us, you know, or we're, keep your eyes open on the town websites too because there's a lot of activities that show up that we are, mm -hmm. have and, and everyone is welcome. So. We enjoy the art group on Monday mornings and anybody is welcome right. to come. Just bring your own supplies and in fact we have so many extra supplies. If you run out, we have them for you, you know. And, um, but we just love getting together and paint and you can work in any medium you wish. And um, some people are doing watercolor, some people are working in oils. And it's on Monday mornings from 9.30 to 11.30. And so please come and join us and um, have a nice cup of coffee also. Marlene. I, I was yes. thinking too, what I think is really neat, <clears throat> excuse me, is to walk in on Thursday mornings mm -hmm. and see the knitting group, Knitting and Crocheting. Oh, yes. And I was thinking if people are at home and here it is winter time and it's, it's kind mm -hmm. of a, you want to keep your hands busy doing something and it's not going to be gardening, um, how about um, learning to crochet? If people have wanted to learn to crochet or knit, there's, there's um, women there who will teach you how. We've almost had a gent who was very interested in learning to crochet. Mm -hmm. um, I said, well, if you just, you know, come on up. They'll even give you a, loan you a crochet hook. Um, learn, learn a craft like that um, mm -hmm. in crocheting. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I can't knit. <laughs> crocheting is just a bunch of slip knots, mm -hmm. but it's really, it, mm -hmm. you can make yourself an afghan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love to walk in and see them sitting by the fireplace. Yeah. Right. And they're all gabbing away, and friendships come out of this. Yeah. Weekly friendships, you know. And it's and free. I think just it's just wonderful. Up. Right. Yes, yes. And how is fuel assistance doing? Okay, well that's one of the things I wanted to especially let our audience know is that again, um, SMOC, South Middlesex Opportunity Council, is taking names and applications for fuel assistance. And um, even though the price of gas and oil is going down, I don't know about gas, so much because um, I'm on a budget plan for NSTAR gas. But if you heat with oil, you've seen a drop. But I mean, it's it's still it's still a lot of money to come up with every month, $400, mm -hmm. $500 for oil. And right now we're in a, a freeze. Um, so if you are a household of one and a person has an income, an annual income of below $32,600, um, they would qualify. If you're a household of four, uh, it's all ages. It can be newborn and like a great-grandfather living with you, a household of four with an annual income for the household of $62,700, um, they would qualify too. So um, if they just call the senior center, you, you don't even have to give me your name. Um, the other outreach worker, Joyce and myself, we can just talk to the person on the phone, let you know what the annual, uh, what the figure is for the income in the household, and we can tell you whether you qualify or not. These are state guidelines, um, not set up by SMOC. It's from the state. And um, you could get, let's see, if you have NSTAR gas, and um, it's usually about $400 to $500 for NSTAR gas. Electricity is about the same amount. Oil, you get more of a stipend because oil has been in the past expensive, more expensive than gas. So um, it's, it's a simple matter to apply. Just find out if you qualify according to the guidelines. We'll put you on our list and send out the material that they need to pull together. Simple things um, like um, well, the house insurance, if you have a mortgage or not, um, social security cards for everybody in the household, and, um, and then proof of the income. So it's pay stubs or social security statements. And that's what we walk them through. We're sort of like the people that help, outreach is the people that help smock, make sure the paperwork's all in line. So, because they handle like 7,000 plus applications mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. So, I don't, I don't want to use the word gatekeeper, but I haven't come up with a better word. But meet with <laughs> us. We'll make sure that your application, we have the application. We do it with you, with them, and we make proof of all the original papers and, and send everything in. And uh, you'll, you'll probably get a, a nice stipend to help you. And if you don't want to, some people don't want to apply for food stamps, which is now called SNAP. If you're going to save 500 in fuel assistance, well, then maybe you can take some of that money and you'll have more money for groceries. So, you know, it's, it's something people should look into. It's a federal program. It can be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. 
And you know, the role of the outreach worker, when I hear you speak, we're so fortunate to have you and Joyce. Thank you. So, you know, it's just so fortunate that we have somebody in the community that somebody can pick up the phone and call. And um, because it's, it's a difficult world out there today. It's, it's, it's very confusing mm -hmm. and technology and, and, um, and getting rides down there to smock and all that to fill out an application oh, can absolutely. be difficult. Yeah. And um, so thank you for the good work that you do. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our pleasure. Oh. And it's confidential. I, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. we don't give out names, put it that and way. And even at meetings, names aren't mentioned. Mm -hmm. Staff right. meeting is not allowed. Right. And everything I know is in a locked drawer, all the information and right. only you and Joyce can get in there. If I have someone's mm -hmm. social security number, I do keep it under lock and key. Mm -hmm. And then once they're approved, um, we shred everything in the spring. We just, once they're approved, we can mm -hmm. shred it because it's a done deal. Very good. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. So I just want to say thank you, Marlene and Amy. And of course, you, Mary Lou. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, so much. Your it's words are beautiful. Thank you. And we wish you continued yes. writing and yes. come back quiet. and share it with and us. Quiet. And continued quiet. You really get into the heart. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we thank you for watching, and we hope you have enjoyed listening to Mary Lou. And, um, and please remember what Marlene said. If you want help, call her, okay? So thank you for watching, and you have a good night. Yes, we're HCAM TV, but movies also? Dive-In Drive-In is a new program featuring the HCAM staff's favorite B-movies. Check our schedule at HCAM.TV for the next showing of some of the more forgotten films. Black and white or color, join Mike Terosian and myself as we introduce and give you some interesting facts about the cast and crews of classic movies. We hope you'll enjoy these treasured films of yesteryear. According to estimates, over one billion people live in appalling levels of poverty. Denied even basic standards of food, water. Nearly half of the world's population earns less than...